Hey, welcome into another episode of the Audio Barnyard Podcast. With Don Barnes, I'm Donnie Barnes. We are brought to you, of course, as always, by VOJumpstart.com, where you can find great courses and done-for-you templates on Studio One and Isotope RX. If you want to learn how to use those pieces of software to the absolute best and maximum ability for voiceover narrators and podcasters. Today, we're talking about punch and roll. What is it? Why should you do it? Why and how can it change your life as a narrator? And so, Donna, I know this is something that you've helped hundreds of people transition into. And for for people that haven't used punch and roll, maybe they're still using uh, the finger snap technique every time they make a mistake. They're having to go back and edit out all their mistakes after they record something raw. Put simply, why can punch and roll change your life over time once you learn it? Well, here's the funny thing. Once people learn it, they don't go back. So after watching hundreds and hundreds of people transition, uh, they end up with higher quality audio and less work. And those two combined mean, I don't know, you can, you, they can, everybody could go back, but they don't. And the one common thing I hear over and over again is, ah, if I had known, I would have done this earlier. So it, it still comes down to two things. I don't want to waste time. Time to market is one of the most important things in this business for people that stay. And after watching thousands of people actually join and start doing narration or start doing voiceover, I've seen thousands fail or go do something else. That isn't necessarily a failure, but it's they go do something else. And it almost always comes down to the same thing. The only reason anyone would ever quit this business from my point of view is because they're not earning enough return on the amount of effort it takes to put something out there. I mean, if I'm making money and I don't know anyone that doesn't like voicing, what they right. don't like is they don't like the tech part of it or the all the peripheral uh, uh, stuff, yeah. to say something worse, that, that, that isn't really part of voicing and isn't part of the creative, the creative process. It's all the little stupid stuff you have to do. So punch and roll makes your life easier, makes your audio better. And that ends up being something that that allows people to get things done quicker. And so they can make enough money and then they stay and keep doing it. Yeah. And from older narrators, and by older, I don't necessarily mean in terms of age, even just people that have been doing it for a while. <laughs> you, you often hear them say things like, well, I've been doing it this old way for years. It's always worked for me. It's what I'm comfortable with. Why should I change? Why should I try to learn this new thing that I know is going to be really painful in the short term? Yeah, I, I think it, it, it's the same as people didn't use microwave ovens for a long time back back in the day before you were born i mean there was a transition when i was a young adult to microwave ovens and today they're every place uh instapot my my your mom i was going to say my wife but your mom uh kind of fought against an instapot in that she knew how to cook for a long time and she's cooked for a big family for a long time and so it was like hey i, I already know how to cook i've got all the stuff I know how to cook. So why should I get one of these Instapots? And then one of your sisters said, well, and, you know, talked her into it. And now she's like, wow, this is good. This actually has some value. And I think the natural thing in life is, hey, I'm a great cook or I'm a great mechanic or I'm a great and buying new tools. Sometimes just it means there's some discomfort there. I have to learn something different. I have to approach things different and short term. I, I don't know, most of us older people, my people my age, more mature, will say, aren't excited about learning something new. And in the beginning, it's just natural to not want to make a change. I already, I'm already successful. Why do I need to learn some new fangled tool that comes out? Why should I use a dishwasher if I've never had one? Well, there's a lot of good reasons. It just doesn't, doesn't seem so the first day. Now, for people that aren't familiar with punch and roll, or maybe they've heard this term a bunch and they're just not sure what it actually means, let's define what punch and roll actually is and why it's called that. Yeah, well, in the old days, what would happen is if you're if you're be, there was a, a, a an engineer who was sitting behind the glass and you were the talent and you are the talent, so you're recording and when you make a mistake, what they would do is they would rewind the tape and they'd say, "Listen, I'm going to play you back what you already said." And just go ahead and talk along with it. And it would often be a singer. This is a, the classic case of it, but would be a singer would be sitting there and just sing along with yourself and keep going and ignore me. 
And then what, what they would do is they would have their finger on the button and the singer would sing up to a certain point and they would go boom and turn on the recorder and they would keep singing. The singer wouldn't really know that the recorder turned on, turned off at a specific time. They were just singing. And then the recorder got turned on for a little while and then got turned off. They'd punch in and they would punch out. So it became known as punch and roll. The tape was already rolling. The singer would sing along with what they would do. The engineer would add a little boop and then boop. And then that little thing between boop and boop would be the point where the new audio would be, uh, you know, added. And the singer really wouldn't know what happened. It just happened. It was kind of easy, but it allowed him to fix a little section cleanly and comfortably with no stress. And then if it didn't work, you know, in the old days, it was a whole lot tougher. There was just not the technology. Today, we just set a point and it plays back for us. And we have a, a, a virtual engineer that starts it for you and makes it easy. So at the end of the day, it's nothing more than a, I want to start here, play me back some, and then it automatically does the rest. So it's really simple. It's a lot easier than back in the day. Plus, you can yes. redo it over and over again. <laughs> right. So, So instead of snapping our fingers every time we make a mistake in our in our narration or our voiceover uh, and having to go back and edit that error out or all of those mistakes out when we get done with the file with punch and roll we stop when we make a mistake then we go back to before the mistake it plays back a few seconds from before we can read along with it and then the playhead the recorder starts again we record right over that mistake and so by the time we get to the end of the file we have no mistakes to edit out we don't really have to edit at the end because we've been doing it as we go. And it ends up, once you have it down and you can do all these things with one or two clicks and a keyboard shortcut, it ends up being much faster both during and after. Well, here's the myth. Um, some people will say, well, I want to snap my finger. I want to snap my finger. I want to snap my finger. So I said that line three times, obviously. What, if you go back and rewind this tape, you'll notice that they were all three slightly different. Mm. So what I can do is I can Franken build that I could go back in the editing process when I'm done here and take out two of those three, I can snap my finger lines. But if anyone were to analyze those, they will notice that they are slightly different tones each time. And, you know, here's this weird thing that happens. If I'm snapping my finger, and then if I'm snapping my finger, and then if I'm snapping my finger, uh, each one of those one of those you might go well that one is awesome now nah, you might not say it for my lines but if you said that one is awesome that's not really the point of having the most awesome single lines you can put together it's having a flow and a natural feel to your voicing which is really different when you franken build the best line with the best line with the best line each of those lines individually might be the best the best i could voice something that doesn't mean they fit together and flow. And the human ear, I mean, when people are listening who aren't, you know, they're not into all this stuff, they don't always know, but something doesn't sound the same to them as when I'm just talking, when we're having an interactive conversation. And when it's actually subtly switching between best line to best line to best line, as opposed to kind of a flow that you get in a normal, comfortable conversation. So punch and roll when done right allows for a better flow throughout everything. And that's what's the winning process over time. It's not just that it saves you time and effort while working. It's that ultimately it sounds better when done right. Now, that doesn't mean the first day it's perfect because I'm still working on it. And I'll get this little discussion point about uh, I lose my flow. Well, that's why the, it plays you some back. And when you learn to do it right, that is what is the key to making sure your match comes in because of what you do during the pre-roll and you get a much better flow. And actors do this all the time on TV, movies, Netflix, if they're filming. They have to do the same scene over and over and over again. And what they have to do a lot of times is go back way before and then the editors try to find a point where it makes sense to try to blend them together. And what they can do is they do a scene change. <laughs> they can go from camera one to camera two to camera three nobody is bothered by all those things and they have the visuals changing. We can't do that in audio. So therefore, when you're punching and rolling, you get a chance to listen to yourself and get a better match. And it's very different. Go ahead and say the same line. 
uh, 10 times in a row and record yourself and you'll see each one is subtly different and you still have to rethink. So, you know, it ends up being a better match. <laughs> Was yeah. that too much info? No, that's great. And that is one of the the common objections that I, I hear, and I'm sure you hear it all the time. And in fact, you first heard it from me, because when you transitioned me to punch and roll about seven years ago, I fought it at first. I didn't like it at first. It was uncomfortable. It was outside what I was used to. And I think one of the first things I said to you was, well, I'm I'm used to just snapping my fingers and keeping going. I don't like having to constantly stop and go back and fix a mistake right away. But I mean, I can tell you from experience. I got used to it. Yeah. If you stick with it long enough, you get used to it. You learn to perform not only just as well, but way better. Because as you said, there are some structural things that once you get over that getting used to it point, those structural advantages really pay off in higher quality over time and better speed. Oh, absolutely. And I've, but here's the funny thing. So you, you, you were classic, you're normal. I mean, you're special, of course, because you're my son, but, uh, you didn't want to do this to begin with and because you had a habit. Mm -hmm. So if I always drive on the right-hand side of the st street and I went over to the UK, I'm going to think driving is horrible over there because it's on the wrong side. <laughs> they're going to love me. It's on the wrong side of the street. And that happens all over the world. So if I go over there and learn to drive, there's a short-term discomfort there because it's just different. Is it better on the side of the street we drive on? I can tell you categorically, I've seen terrible drivers in different locations around the world. It doesn't really matter. It's the same thing. And I, I would guess there are specific instances where one way is better than the other for one case. But overall, all the cases come up in equal measure over time. And so, hey, they're equivalent, but they certainly are a habit that once you learn it one way, there's a short transition period where it's not going to be comfortable to drive the other way. And it's the same with almost everything in life. Short term switching for some people is tougher than others. Some of it is how much, how long they've had a certain habit. Yeah. And the amount of time when you're describing punch and roll, it can sound, it can sound like a lot of different steps when it would seem intuitively easier to just keep going, keep snapping my fingers, using a dog clicker, whatever your old method was. It can sound like that's actually faster. Once you get punch and roll down, I can tell you categorically, it's not. You'll save so much time on every single project you do from this day forward once you get it down, once you get used to it, once you get over that initial hurdle and that pain point. And especially for people doing longer form narration, right? The people who do a lot of e-learning, audio books, things like that. You'll save time on shorter files too, but especially if you're doing anything longer form, it completely changes your life, doesn't it? Well, it does. And we see it every time we do one of these podcasts. I, there are a couple of points in here where I'd love to do a sentence over. I hear myself mumble. I hear myself saying something in a way that I think, oh, that's terrible. But I happen to know we don't have punch and roll in this. So we have to stop it. We have to restart it. We have to find the transition. We have to put in a little transition where everybody knows, ah, Don messed up. <laughs> so sometimes that's worse than just being organic about it. But if I'm listening to an audiobook, if I'm doing an e-learning thing, it needs to be right. It needs to be true to the script. This is a different context. So while I would love to have video punch and roll, it, it, it just isn't a thing that I know of, at least in the with the tech we have today. So it ends up that habits are the biggest issue and the decision. But I, have, I have to ask you a question. Do you remember it all? Because it's been so long. I know today you would never go back, but do you remember how long you were, you had the discomfort of just doing something different when you switched over? Was this yeah. weeks? Was this four months? It took you two years? It was a solid month, at least, I would say. Okay. Yeah, it was, it was a fairly significant amount of time. I really whined about it internally and, and externally to you, as I'm sure I remember you remember. The external. Because it was, you know, it's one of the things that's tough early on, especially if you're very early in your, in your narration career and you're still doing another job full time. And then maybe you're coming home late at night and you're recording for a couple hours. Cause I did that for a long time. And the last thing you feel like doing on top of all the work you're putting in, all the time you're spending, the sleep you're, you're losing, trying to make this dream of becoming a full-time voiceover person a reality, 
last thing you feel like you have the bandwidth to do is also learn a new habit and unlearn an old one and change up your process and take more time in the short term to record a couple of things. You just don't feel like you have it in you. But because I was able to press through that, it's it's opened up so many things. I couldn't do what I do now. I couldn't have the career I have where I'm doing voiceover and sometimes broadcasting games at night where my time is always limited. I couldn't do all that stuff if I weren't doing punch and roll with all the time that it saves me on every single project. And I'm sure that you've seen that with hundreds of other students of yours. Yeah, it's crazy. It's it's one of, it's still a little bit maddening for me that I have to I mean, I, essentially, I need to convince somebody and really show them the value of it. But what's happened is the numbers have just been, they're outrageous, where thousands have made that transition. And when you, when you watch thousands, you're going to see that out of that, less than a handful, I mean, I can count on one hand the number of people that went back to doing it the old way. I'm not saying it's zero, mm-hmm. but it's so small anymore that you kind of say, okay, they all know the old way. You could go back to the clicker in a minute if you if it were a value to you. Sure. So there's no barrier to going back. But what the barrier is, is the productivity has now been raised. The matches and quality are stronger. And then so nobody wants to go back. It isn't it isn't like, ah, oh, I can't wait to get back to the clicker method. It's I'm going back to it because I haven't changed habits. And we all struggle with that in every area of life, many of us. What I do see though is that there are a subset of people who just mentally make the decision, you know what, I'm going with this. I trust that it's going to be better. And they don't do what we did with the internal whining of Swain. I used to argue, you can, if you go back far enough in one of the, the audiobook groups, you will find a thread there where I said, I'm such a great editor that I can do non-punch and roll as fast. I can put out stuff as fast or better and higher quality than somebody who does punch and roll. I argued against it. And you'll, you'd have to go back at least about eight years to find that, but it is there. Someone found one sometime and I thought, oh, that's okay. <laughs> it, it, it does exist. I argued against it. And I just basically said, look, I'm such a fast editor. I was a good editor before I ever started doing this stuff. So I thought I could match them and there wasn't any value in it myself. So I can argue both sides of it. I have argued both sides. Of it. I kind of feel sheepish about how much I acted like I knew stuff. And some of it was, I was a beginner and I didn't have the perspective of doing both. And I just argued based on, I'm a great editor. So I didn't understand the match. I also hadn't heard the difference in quality. And today I now have hundreds of people that have transitioned in a long weekend, but unlike you, who, you know, you didn't really want to do it. You were doing it because your old dad was kind of complaining to you to try this. (laughs) That's not always the best way to do things in life, but I have had people transition in a long weekend where by the time they get done with it saying, I'm never going back. This is crazy. This is so much better. And so it's both, but they, but different personalities, it's okay. You know, it might take you a month, but it'll be worth it. That's the the real kicker. And what, so I can, can you reiterate, would you go back? Would you, would you do it the other way? Never. Not in a million years. It's it just saves me so much time, and it's and it's second nature now. I'm so used to it, and it's it's easy. It flows. When people talk about, oh, I hate editing my files. I hate editing my e-learning. After I I enjoy the recording, I hate the editing. I my initial response is always, what editing? Oh, oh, (laughs) are you still not doing punch and roll? Oh, so you actually do have to go back and edit after? Oh, that would suck. Why are you doing that? Yeah, I well, it. I do Again, too. I did it too, but uh, it's I haven't done it in years, and I almost forget that a lot of people still do it that way. Yeah, the amount of work they're doing is is hard to uh, it's hard to imagine, and it's just more work. So, so all I have to say is sometimes what you, if, find your mentors, find the people. We talk about that and some of the other things. And you may have to trust them for a short period of time, and and but but find people you trust. Be careful with somebody who's old like me, who's been doing this a long time. Sometimes, I mean, I could be, I'm wrong about all sorts of things in life where I do it the same way I did when I was 30, 40, 50, whatever. I've, I have some habits that are probably could be stronger. And uh, I'm not on every social media platform. I'm not on Discord yet. I'm not, on, I mean, I, I hear about Instagram. I don't do it. You do it. I mean, so here's the thing for those of you who are thinking about punch and roll. You see us old people, older people, 
who are of who who don't want to do Facebook at one point, who don't want to do Instagram, who don't want to do LinkedIn, who don't who you know we we fight against the things that you're going. Why wouldn't you do Instagram? Why wouldn't you do Discord or pick your social media platform? And sometimes it's just well, I'm good at Facebook. I don't I, Facebook's good enough for me. What you're saying, if you're on one of these and many of the other good platforms that are out there is, hey, OK, Facebook's fine. But there's there might be seven others that are better for what you're doing and would get you more results and get you more information and get you more business. Now, we're talking a business situation here. And if you're going to make money in this business, you want the fastest possible process and the best quality. And there's some real productivity wins when you're doing punch and well, punch and roll. Well, they, I would do that one over. If I were doing that one <laughs> and I had punch and roll, I would re say that line. I'm not going to in this, but this is a live thing. We're just talking. If I were doing that from a script and I had, I tripped over that, you would, you would say, well, that's terrible. Go back and fix that. Live's different. But in the context of recording somebody else's script, the punch and roll will pay you back. The quality goes up and your workload goes down. So it's really amazing. And I've seen it over, I mean, thousands of times. Unfortunately, I've also seen hundreds and, well, it's more, I've seen more people fail or get out of the business than I've seen stay in it over a couple of years. And some of it's just, they're not getting enough return. And since they can make more being a Walmart greeter, nothing against the Walmart greeters, um, but it's not enough income for the amount of effort that they're putting in. So they go do something else. Okay. So questions, comments? No, two things as we wrap up. So one, uh, punch and roll capability and functionality in different DAWs in different recording software programs, it's not created equal. So you'll, you'll hear certain people say, well, every DAW does punch and roll now. Yeah, but they do it differently. And some of them weren't originally designed to do it. And so they do it in kind of a shoddy way when you break it down that can burn you at points. So in our next episode, we're going to talk more about why some DAWs are better than others for punch and roll over the long run. So be sure and check that out in just a little while. Also, if you want to talk to Don face-to-face -face or Zoom to Zoom, screen to screen as the case may be, for 15 minutes or so about why punch and roll is so much better, and he can show you actually on his screen why it is so much faster once you get it down, you can set up a free 15-minute consultation at vojumpstart.com. Just look for that link a little about uh, halfway down the page. And of course, check out our courses there as well. So until next time, this has been the Audio Barnyard Podcast. For Don Barnes, I'm Donnie Barnes. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.